I am a linear thinker. I am a rule follower, a form filler outer. I am a sister, a daughter, a wife, an entrepreneur, a veteran, a farmer, a type A doer of deeds. I believe inspiration, innovation, and strength comes from the skills required to work within the rules instead of blanketly bucking them. I am Stephanie Norton, the impromptu founding farmer of Dickinson Farm, an heirloom fruit, vegetable, and herb farm in National City, California. And I am here today because of something as insignificantly small as a speck of dirt. In 2012, we bought our forever home. It was an 1888 Victorian Joshi of an acre, lots of space, an ocean view. It needed love, lots and lots of love. <laughs> <laughs> we moved in and started cleaning up over 50 bags of pine needles, four roll-off containers of things left behind, unboarded the windows, removed the one screw holding on the dilapidated porch, <laughs> and removed over 100 pounds of honey dripping from what would then become our master bedroom. We changed the locks, settled in, all while I was commuting to Long Beach and preparing for a deployment. One such training landed me squarely on San Clemente Island, right here off the coast of California. What I thought was just dust and dirt in my hair, we later found out was a tick. Unfortunately, Southern California doctors are not Lyme literate. Military doctors do better setting broken bones and packing bullet wounds than dealing with a bacterial infection. And as they so eloquently reminded me, I had a plane to catch. I spent the next 10 months at Joint Task Force Guantanamo Bay, getting sicker and sicker by the day. I stopped, if I stopped moving, my joints would freeze up. I would cough up blood. I would lose control of my entire left side including my tear ducts, and presenting to your commanding officer with tears running down your face when you think it's sweat, I assure you no glass ceilings were broken that day. Finally, after returning home, bouncing doctor to doctor, and two and a half years untreated, just one month after I said, in sickness and in health, I was diagnosed with stage three Lyme and started daily IV treatments. Everything I expected to be doing changed. Instead of enjoying my life with my new husband, spending hours getting an IV cocktail of antibiotics, antivirals, steroids, head spinning about the unfairness of it all, the anger of ignorance, how if they would have just given me four weeks of antibiotics. The day we realized I got bit, I wouldn't be here. My knees and my back would not be deteriorating. My lungs would not be scarred. It was deep, deep, dark, soul-searching, and despair. From the start, my doctor told me to eat clean. It would help my treatment protocol be more effective. I did. Remember, I'm a rule follower. We had a CSA and realized between treatment, Mike's two-hour commute to work, and his 12-hour work days, there really wasn't time to cook. We tried meal delivery. I started having counter interdictions between the food and my medicine. So like any frustrated type A person with no farming experience and can't grow anything, I decided to grow my own food. <laughs> my doctor is a stoic Russian. He laughed, patted Mike on the shoulder and said, please don't let her kill herself. We're trying to save her. My cousin, my cousin, my dad built raised beds for me. They installed the irrigation. We worked with a mentor to learn what to grow. We had an abundance very quickly. We gave it away to a small co-op, our neighbors, our family, our friends. And then one year into a two-year treatment protocol, the Coast Guard decided to medically retire me. I was shocked. I was anger. I was angry. I was confused. And the unfairness and darkness returned. I honestly thought I would recover and return to my uniform, my deployments. After reeling for a while, Mike reminded me why I joined the military, to serve my country. If we farmed, we could serve our community. So we did. I leveraged the anger as energy and sat in an IV chair, learning everything that I could about the business of farming. Licenses, soil testing, plot plans, pricing, available market strategies. I wrote the business plan and plot plan from my IV chair, submitted business licenses on my way home from treatment. 
Due to my limitation, we planned an employee from day one. This is pretty rare for a farm of our size. We're just a quarter acre. We launched in June of 2016. We had planned for an 18 month break even point. We hit it in 12. We got a slow and steady customer base and organically grew. In fall of last year, we purchased more property to expand to, hired a head grower, we increased our product line, we developed the pharmacy program, a specialty diet and CSA delivery program to people and patients in need, and then a stumble. I stopped for lunch at Cardamon Cafe after running errands. My body was achy. I needed a break from both the drive and the day. I ordered my food, waited, started updating my to-do list, and the words on the paper were jumbled. I thought, it must just be eye strain. It's the holidays, it's stressful. My food came, I picked up my fork, stared at my plate, and had no idea what the two were meant to do. I sat there for a while, brain fog continuing to get deeper, thicker. The waitress finally came over and asked me kindly if I would like it to go. Thankfully that week I was scheduled for my normally quarterly checkup. I had been in remission for about 18 months, every quarter going back just to make sure that I was still in remission. Thinking maybe I would just need a steroid shot or maybe a steroid pack at most, swollen joints, pain, exhaustion, was probably just previous Lyme damage, maybe a pinched nerve, the brain fog, I'm sure it's just allergies. After logically listing my symptoms and downplaying them all to my doctor, the clincher for him was brain fog. I was qu quickly escorted to the infusion side of the office. Ironically, to the room I had my first IV treatment in. The room Mike slept every day for months after working nights and driving me to treatment. The room I had an allergic hallucination in. The room Mike told me that the only people that cared if I lived or died were not my shipmates that I deployed with, but the people in this office and to be nice to them even when I wanted to scream. Here we go again. Pre-breakfast, coffee, traffic, treatment, breakfast, treatment, work day. Stay out of the sun, rest more. Don't stress your joints, use a walker. A fucking walker at 45. Wait, smile, you have customers. Realization hit that I'm not in remission anymore. I will forget names, word, places. People will think I'm either an idiot or an asshole. I will always have to use a GPS. I will have to ensure my cell phone is charged and the tracker is on. I will be inundated by critics pointing out the stumble. If food is medicine, why are you back in treatment? You don't look sick. Maybe you should just eat some of your own food and try to drop some weight. How can you be sick if you're working so much? How can you farm if you're so sick? Because we all know farming, to have a financially viable farm is only planting and harvesting. And if you can see my eye roll, thank you. <laughs> I will lose friends. I will figure out which friends are friends. And then I was reminded by the amazing man that stands in the side right there that there is no effort without error and shortcoming. Lyme has taken most of my body. It will not take my mind. I will not succumb to defeat. My anger is my energy. What will I use it for this time? I spent those six months in the IV chair writing the Business of Farming course. We launched a semester long course at Southwestern College in collaboration with Small Business Development Center in August. Our first cohort was nine aspiring and beginning farmers, some of which are here today. They'll graduate in December. We've had so much interest that we'll be running it again in the spring and expanding it to all of California. Thank you. Our farm and business continues to grow and flourish. We have succeeded in spite of it all. And because every day I remember the words of Theodore Roosevelt, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. 
The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred with dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly and errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, because who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best, in the end, knows the triumph of high achievement, or at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who never know victory or defeat. I challenge you, be a doer of deeds.